we're talking about all the different relationships we have in our lives. One expert says the two biggest reasons couples go to therapy are communication and connection. And sometimes it can take a special approach to help couples learn to really hear each other and be heard in return. Dr. Debbie Stern is a local psychologist and relationship expert. Her book is Communicating Courageously, Hear, Be Heard, and Connect in Your Closest Relationships. And she joins us this morning. I'm not sure, good morning, I'm not sure people realize that they're in a rut, that they're, they're talking past each other. Why don't they get that they're talking past each other? Well, I would say what often happens in communication is that our emotions take over. Yeah. And so we're so busy trying to get our point across, and I want to be heard, that I don't stop to listen to you. So listening is the biggest part, right? It is the biggest part. But do you have to say one of those things, like, you know, you hear these buzzwords where you're like, I hear you, I hear what you're saying. That just almost makes you more crazy and angry, doesn't it? When someone says that, it almost sounds condescending. Well, yes and no. Okay. And I would say more no than yes. Yeah. But first of all, it is about the listening, but it's also about how you communicate the message, right? So if I come out after you and I attack you, with something like, oh, thanks for getting back to me on that text yesterday. Right. That's passive aggressive, by the way. Mm -hmm. Or I say, you always do this, and I'm coming down on you that way. Or if I don't say it at all, then we're not communicating, right? because you don't know what I'm feeling, if I say it in a passive-aggressive way yeah. or I'm attacking you, you're going to defend yourself or shut down and be like, I'm not dealing with you. Mm. But if I approach you in an assertive way where I'm saying what I feel, what triggered it, and why, and what I like instead, now maybe you can hear me. Mm. So it's how you approach the communication, it's how you communicate <laughs> about it, is the first step. And yes, the listening is just as important, but it's a lot easier to hear a message that's put out that way as opposed to someone attacking yeah. you or being indirect. Now, what you said, though, is, were you asking me about the listening part? I hear oh, you. Oh, how, how can. <laughs> this okay, is how so, it makes me feel. Yeah, okay, yeah. so yes and no. So touchy-feely it is in some ways because whenever we're communicating and asserting our feelings, we do start with the I feel message, right? And we say, I felt ignored when you didn't respond to my text. I felt uncomfortable when you brought up politics in our discussion again. So saying the feeling word really anchors people in the conversation because if I care about you and you care about me, we care about the feelings. We say, I feel this, when you that, because, and I wish instead. As a listener, that what I heard you say and repeating it back and parroting it to me, it's critical. And I'll tell you right now, when my clients do that in the session, the person who was speaking, their shoulders drop, their facial expression changes. They're finally feeling heard. When so someone, so when you repeat back, yes. I heard you say this, I heard you say that, it really is important to do. Yes. Ah, That's the first okay. step in listening. All right. After that, though, it's equally as important to then show me that you understood how I felt. And how but, do you do that? So I would say, for example, Robin, I understand how you would have felt ignored that I didn't respond to your text earlier today. And I can understand why you want me to respond. So it's the hearing part and the understanding. Mm. If that empathy yeah. is the piece that keeps us connected. That's the whole point of staying connected in relationships, not just with couples. Your mom, your sister, your best friend, your daughter, yeah. your close neighbor. It's but I think this attack mode, defensiveness, passive aggressive, I think for some people that's just their normal because that's what they grew up with. Exactly. Right. And actually at the very beginning of the book, before I even talk about styles of communication, it talks about what factors might affect how you naturally communicate, your current patterns, how you grew up your cognitive style, your emotional, maybe you're more emotional, maybe you're more quiet. So there are lots of factors that go into it, but understanding those factors ahead of time will help you figure out how to change them. Can you imagine though, if you're married to someone who's used, you're used to communicating in this aggressive style, all of a sudden they turn to you the next day and then they start talking in this new mm -hmm. buzzword <laughs> term, you'd be like, who is this? So how do you, how, yes. you can't just pivot automatically. How do you yes. ease into that? That's a great question. These steps will sound and feel and be very difficult and unnatural at first, right. but I promise you, if you stick with it over time, you're going to be happy to hear your partner say, I felt upset when, as opposed to banging over the head with it. Mm. Yeah. Does and that at, make sense? At what point do you say, let's just stop and come back to this That's at a, another time? Excellent question. We call that a timeout. There's an entire chapter on it. It's so important. A timeout. You, you call it as soon as you're off my script. As soon as you're off the model, you call that time out, you pause the conversation, you calm yourself down, sort out your feelings, what you're gonna say in that I feel way, and how you're gonna listen and respond empathically and connectively. That's what's key. So you stop right away as soon as you're off. So has this worked with couples where you've seen, I mean, them turn this around really? Big time. Really? Not just couples, yeah. mothers and daughters, ah. any relationship. 
Interesting. Has, have you worked with news organizations? <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, everywhere I go, I show people the book, yeah. and they say to me, oh, everyone can use that. Yeah. Yeah. All sure. ages, all backgrounds, it's all the He's same. He's not hearing me. I know, right? I'm saying it. I just, he doesn't Time hear out. me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, thank you. It's great stuff. DrDebraStern.com is where you can find her. You can also follow her on social media, and uh, there is the book. Thanks so much for being thank with you. us. Thanks for having me. Time now.